Coach, first off, congratulations. Another player last night of yours drafted in the NBA draft. Talk a little bit about uh, you know what it's been like to coach so many guys and see them go on to the next level like that. Well, it's exciting. Every time it's exciting. I mean, in D'Angelo's case, being the number two pick overall in the draft, you know, we were so proud of him and happy for his family and happy for Montford and the community that, you know, supported him and the team. Um, and, uh, you know, it definitely doesn't get old. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited about him and obviously having Joel Embiid uh, that was at Montford and, you know, Michael Gilchrist and the carry, I mean, um, uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, you're looking at four guys in the last five years to go in the top three. And then we were just as proud of the Kyrie Johnson, who went to OKC in the second round. I think the Kyrie's going to have a great career and be a career pro. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, we're happy for all those guys and his family uh, obviously went to St. Pat's and then came down to follow me to Florida. So showing me a lot of respect uh, to, to make that trip and come down and be part of Mount Verde. So we were, we were thrilled for him, just like we were for D'Angelo last night. You mentioned D'Angelo and Kyrie, two of the maybe most popular guards, you know, in college basketball in the NBA right now. What's a skill set or trait that kind of separates them from the average guard uh, in the league? I think both Kyrie Irving and, and D'Angelo Russell are both really, really good using a ball screen. They really make good decisions on uh, when to turn a corner, when to kick it out, when to hit the roll, when to hit the big guy that's lifting. They read and react really good. And a lot of times you do breakdown drills with guards and you might dummy it and tell them turn the corner and score or turn the corner and kick it to the, to the wing, drop it to the corner or turn the, turn the top and hit the lift and give them different scenarios and guys do it well. But it's only a handful of guys that do it great at game speed and when you have to read and react when you're doubled quick or you're, or you're not doubled or however the defense decides to play it. And both those guys are just, you're just awesome at making the right decision, reading the defense quickly, and you know deciding to hit the roll, to take it themselves, kick it out. They're both uh, you know two of the better guys in the world at that. Coach, talk about camp real quick for us. You know, what's some of the things that you stress uh, teaching players at camp? You know, every, when you come up here on the weekends. I, I think the biggest thing at camp is paying, being a good listener, listener, paying attention to detail. And to me, that's what separates players. That's what separates uh, coaches. That's what separates businesses a lot of times in deciding uh, you know, who, who listens better, who learns better, and who pays attention to the small detail for one pass to get delivered to the post because I'm stepping outside and around, and another pass getting deflected because I'm being lazy and trying to uh, uh, spin the ball in instead of using my pivot foot correctly. And I, I, I think that's the thing we try to do is tell them it's, it's not rocket science, it's basketball, and it's fundamentals and repetition, fundamentals and repetition, and paying attention to detail. So we try to be very vanilla, very basic, and to pound it in their heads, just like we do with the kids at St. Pat's and, and at Montverde Academy over and over and over. And they just get better and better as time goes on. A lot of kids go to camp and all they want to do is play game after game after game. How important is the, the skill work and the instruction that the coaches give you every day at camp? Well, I think it's really important. Obviously, as a kid, you want to play your two or three games a day. If, if you gave most kids their choice, they wouldn't do any drills. But the reality of it is, it's a combination. You have to do a lot of drill work, a lot of reps, you know, dummy reps. Then you also have to play a lot with live offense and defense to learn the read and react part of it. So I think the, the blend of the two is good. And some kids don't like to drill, but it's important if you're not a great shooter that you're taking your four or five, 600 shots a day. But it's also important you're taking shots with live defense in game situations. So, and the same in every other area of the game. So I think the, the drill work's really critical, but I also think playing is really critical and playing three on three half court, playing one on one, playing full court, I think all of it's important that you mix the two together. Lastly coach, you've been uh, running camp up here for a number of summers now. Just give us a little bit about your experience at camp and what it's been like you know, running camp in the Poconos for so long. Well I, I love coming up to the Poconos. I, I always uh, you know, feel fortunate that you know, Rob Kennedy asked me to come up and, and do camp for him. I mean, Rob does a terrific job. He has great camps, you know. Obviously, these elite camps, it's AAU stuff. Everything the Hoop Group does is done first class. So I'm proud to be a part of the group and be able to help. And uh, it just means a lot. I love the Pocono area. I love the outdoor camps because it's something that you just never, when, when, uh, when I was young, you played outdoors all the time. Now you have kids sometimes that have never played outdoors. And I think it's, it's a good experience. It's, it's important to get to the park and play. And I think this is a great facility. It's a beautiful location. 
and it's, it's peaceful too. So it's, it's really, um, I'm happy and fortunate to come up here every year. Coach, appreciate the time and look forward to having you later in the summer.